Have you ever wondered how the notorious commanders of Hitler's concentration camps met their end? During World War II, the commandants of concentration camps were responsible for the deaths of millions of people. In this video, we'll explore the lives of Karl Otto Koch, Ilse Koch, and Rudolf Hoess, and how they were executed for their role in the genocide. From personal gain to experimenting with gas chambers, these commanders committed heinous acts of cruelty that resulted in their downfall. Stay tuned to the end to learn about the brutal executions of these merciless individuals. During the course of World War II, Numerous commandants of concentration camps oversaw the deaths of millions of people. These commandants were high-ranking members of the SS who were trusted to manage the efficient and cruel operation of the facilities like Auschwitz, Bergen-Belsen, and Ravensbrück. Many of the commandants and their wives lived on or near the camps. For example, Rudolf Hoess's wife eventually learned about the atrocities being committed at Auschwitz, where her husband worked, and even refused to sleep with him because of his crimes. However, one woman who took great pleasure in her husband's work was Ilse Koch, the wife of the Buchenwald commandant. Interestingly, Hoess and Koch, both of whom were sentenced to death after the war, were executed within the camps they had once overseen. Karl Otto Koch had a lengthy and varied career in the SS, starting in different positions before eventually taking command at Sostenberg concentration camp and becoming an officer in charge of guards at the Esterwegen and Lichtenberg camps. Despite a dubious past that included imprisonment, Koch earned the trust of Himmler. He later became an adjutant at the Dachau concentration camp and his career continued to rise with promotions to the commander of the Columbia concentration camp in Berlin, Sachsen, and eventually the SS colonel. On August 1, 1937, Koch was appointed as the commandant of Buchenwald concentration camp, where he would remain for more than four years. This camp was among the largest established by the Nazis, housing around 280,000 prisoners and resulting in the deaths of approximately 60,000. The conditions were horrific, with inmates forced to engage in grueling labor. The original intention was for the camp to hold 8,000 prisoners, who would work in nearby clay deposits to make bricks. At Buchenwald, Karl Otto Koch was the first commandant and lived there with his second wife, Ilse Koch, infamous for her cruelty and nicknamed the Witch of Buchenwald. The majority of prisoners died due to appalling conditions, deliberate starvation, and grueling labor, leading to malnutrition and disease. Prisoners were worked to death, and many were executed by hanging or firing squad. Koch was responsible for the conduct of other staff, such as Walter Gerard Martin Summer, who executed prisoners in the nearby forests. Summary executions of Soviet prisoners also occurred, with many being shot in the neck. Koch and his wife engaged in personal gain by creating large building projects at Buchenwald. For instance, they built a horse riding arena for Ilse, and any prisoner caught looking at her during her exercises would be executed. However, the source of their funding for these projects remains unclear. Karl Otto Koch was suspected of various wrongdoings, such as embezzlement, fraud, drunkenness, and even murder by the SS and the Nazis. He was transferred from Buchenwald to Majdanek, but was eventually dismissed after 86 prisoners escaped while under his supervision. SS Opergruppenführer Josius, Prince of Waldeck and Pyrmont, became interested in investigating Koch's affairs after seeing the name of Walter Kramer, a doctor or nurse at Buchenwald who had treated the prince. This led to the discovery that Koch and his wife were stealing money from the Nazis and had ordered execution of prisoners at the camp. They were both arrested and Karl Otto Koch was sentenced to death for bringing shame to the SS. Despite being responsible for much of the death toll at Buchenwald, he was sent back there as a prisoner and became one of the victims himself. As Germany began to lose the war and the collapse of the Nazi regime seemed inevitable, 
Carl Otto Koch faced execution by firing squad on April 5, 1945. A group of SS officers hastily gathered to carry out the sentence at the very sites where Koch had caused immense suffering and horror. Blindfolded and ordered to stand against the wall, Koch was shot by the firing squad. But Koch was not the only one to face such a fate. Rudolf Hoess, who had served in the First World War and joined the Nazi Party, was appointed to Dachau in 1934 before being assigned to Sachsenhausen in 1938, where he was responsible for executing hundreds of prisoners. Hoess was later tasked by Heinrich Himmler with establishing the concentration camp at Auschwitz where he became the commandant and oversaw the extermination of thousands of people each day while living in a nearby villa with his wife and children. Despite his wife's ignorance of the nature of his work, Hoas remained dedicated to his mission to create a highly efficient concentration camp. As the commandant, he held responsibility for other guards who carried out brutal torture inside Block 11. In his quest for the most efficient methods of killing, He experimented and ultimately decided on gas. The gas chambers of Auschwitz were responsible for the deaths of over one million people. He commented on the killing process, stating that it was technically simple to exterminate even greater numbers. The killing itself was quick and easy, requiring no guards to force people into the chambers as they willingly entered, thinking they were going to shower. However, burning the bodies was a time-consuming task. Hoess was dismissed from Auschwitz, after allegations of an affair with an inmate surfaced, but he returned to oversee the extermination of 430,000 Hungarian Jews. This bloody operation spanned 56 days, during which 10,000 people were gassed each day, overwhelming the number of personnel available to dispose of the bodies. Eventually, he was sent to Ravensbrück before fleeing as the Second World War drew to a close. After his wife's arrest, he was captured and beaten by soldiers and attempted to consume cyanide, which proved unsuccessful. He went on to testify as a defense witness at the Nuremberg trials. During his testimony, he revealed that he had been commanding Auschwitz until December 1, 1943, and estimated around 3 million people had died there with about 70% to 80% of them having been executed and exterminated through gassing and burning. Among the victims were about 20,000 Russian prisoners of war and approximately 100,000 German Jews, as well as citizens from various countries, such as the Netherlands, France, Belgium, Poland, Hungary, Czechoslovakia, and Greece. In the summer of 1944, They executed around 400,000 Hungarian Jews alone at Auschwitz. He revised his estimation of the number of people he killed to approximately 1.5 million, but he was ultimately sentenced to death in 1947 for his role in the killing operation of Auschwitz. Former prisoners of Auschwitz requested that Rudolf Hoess be executed on a gallows built within the camp's fences as they believed it was appropriate for him to face justice at the site of his heinous crimes. This request was granted, and a gallows was constructed by former prisoners of war, complete with a trapdoor. On the day of the execution, only those with special permits were allowed on the grounds of Auschwitz, and armed guards were stationed throughout the area. Hoas was brought on the site at 8 a.m., and briefly held in the commandant's office after having a cup of coffee before being taken to a holding cell. He was taken to the gallows at 10 a.m. and reportedly appeared calm and even confident as he strutted down the camp street with his hands cuffed behind his back. Upon reaching the gallows, executioners assisted him in climbing onto the stool, where the noose was fastened around his neck. The hangman then removed the stool, causing him to hang. He was declared dead 13 minutes after the hanging took place. Karl Otto Koch and Rudolf Hoess, former commandants of concentration camps, were responsible for the deaths of hundreds of thousands and known for their barbaric policies that condemned many. However, they were eventually brought back to their former camps to experience their last moments of life. 
As we reflect on the merciless executions of Hitler's commanders, it's important to remember the immense suffering and horror that was inflicted upon innocent people during World War II. The actions of these commandants and their wives are despicable, and their crimes will never be forgotten. If you found this video informative, please consider sharing it with others and subscribing to our channel for more thought-provoking content.